All right, we have chapter 11, Site Assessment and Theme Development for Floral Design. Um, your objectives determine the basic information needed to develop or produce a special event. Analyze an event site in order to create appropriate floral designs. Create thematic designs for large or small spaces or venues. Produce an event timeline for the setup, installation, and removal of designs at an event site. Um, then discuss budget and pricing consideration for special events. Um, production, the process of planning or developing an event. So the hard part is um, when you look at doing an event, a lot of times, you know, weddings will come to mind. Things that you'll need to do is, you know, when someone comes into a floral shop and says, hey, I want to do an event, you need to get some information from that person. Um, who's going to be in attendance? What's it for? Where is it going to be held? Is there a style or a theme? Um, are you going to have personal flowers like a boutonniere and corsage? Um, is there special flowers you need for a ceremony? And then maybe some for a reception. Um, so if you see here, like this is a fancy wedding venue and they have an arch and two little potted plants, obviously you'd want to emphasize some other things there. And there's a lot of area to play with. So that's part of, you know, the site evaluation is taking a look at what's available and discussing that with your client. So the W principle, once again, who, what, where, when, you need to figure those things out. Those are pieces of discussion to get. Um, obviously, if the wedding's in December, you would want to make sure that you are, you know, doing seasonal things instead of, you know, trying to push them to get peonies or something that's not in season and would be super expensive. All right, know your customer. If it's someone that's been to your shop before, you know, maybe you should have an idea of what type of flowers they like, what they don't like. Um, that includes, you know, their style preferences, Nar help them narrow down the options. If you do go to some floral shops, you'll note that they do have books that are like, if you like purple flowers, look through the book, see what you like. Um, and then some of them might know the type of flowers they do like, so you're going to want to work with that. Um, there are some people that are super opinionated. You're going to have to, you know, deal with that as best you can um, and try to help them make the best decisions. So what's the occasion for? Is it a birthday, wedding, anniversary? Um, it's going to be a small or large event. How many arrangements do you need? How old is the person celebrating? Um, and then formal or informal. And some of the age of the celebrant, sometimes they like a different type of, you know, flower design. Um, it also might help to like, say if it's a 40th or 50th, sometimes you use different colors for those things. The where. So if I'm going to do a wedding at a farm or like this image here where there's a wedding at a beach, I'm probably going to have a little bit of a different theme tied into this. And I want to play into that. Is it indoor or outdoor? If it's outdoor, hopefully there's a backup plan. You know, if you've been invited to a wedding before, you may have seen that, like, you know, in case of rain, we're going to go to blah, 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 church, um, or banquet hall, wherever it may be. And then how are you going to transport materials? If I am the floral designer and I've been asked to build this big arch, this, I mean, if you're going to fit um, the officiant or preacher and two people underneath that, um, this could be six feet long, could be eight feet long. That's a big piece to move. So, you know, if you could make it in segments and then attach it to the arch when you get there, um, there could, there's going to have to be some on-site setup at some of these events. Even taking these little arrangements, if I have 20 of those in the back of my vehicle, it's going to be pretty full. Um, so this is something to consider. Uh, they do make boxes that you can, you know, assemble and then you tuck the um, container inside of the box to help it be stable during transport. Um, and the when. So you can see they're kind of giving you different ideas of time of the year. This is obviously trying to get you the hint that December wedding situation, uh, beach wedding, hopefully it's warm out, right? Uh, so this is that piece, if it's a certain time of year, Christmas time, they have all the Christmas flowers like poinsettias, uh, maybe even amaryllis. Um, and some of them might be more expensive just because it's a colder season. So part of that, you're going to look at the availability, the time of day as well, um, just to kind of tie into their theme and give them an idea for price points. So the environment, um, you may want to consider if I have some super fragrant flowers, you might be attracting some insects. Like this is outside. Um, you have to be cautious because especially if you have guests that are allergic to bees, you could have some issues there. Um, and you may also want to think about like here, this shrub, this is something that you cannot move. Um, 
hopefully you can play into those colors or maybe you can do something that's going to be a good accent color. Um, but you're trying to give the theme and distinct character to the wedding or event. So looking at the um, architecture of the site is also important. Excuse me, important. You want to look at the style. The height of the ceiling is going to be a big factor too. I'm not going to do these super tall, elaborate arrangements in a place that has eight foot ceilings. I'd be silly. Um, it also is going to make a difference in the scale of your arrangements. Obviously, this is a big banquet hall has a fancy chandelier, so they've kind of played up with that. Um, they've used glass, which kind of helps reflect that light too. Um, spatial details, you might want to consider if I have these big long banquet tables and I'm going to have 40 people sitting around that table, um, I want to consider space for everybody. And I also want to make it look nice and decorated. You can see here too, they've put flower petals to kind of spread out the idea of flowers throughout but save space because they might be putting platters of food between there. All right, focal points. If you look at this image, you can see the focal point kind of led to, you know, this, this red runner is drawing us up here toward, um, I'm guessing this is a wedding from the looks of it, but it's up at the altar here, which has got a canopy over it. Um, they've also played up to this focal point of the runner with an arrangement on either side, drawing your eye that way. Um, the other thing to consider, they put these arrangements at the back because you don't want to block, if all the people are sitting in these chairs, you don't want to block their view. So they didn't put them up front here because you might have, you know, groomsmen, bridesmaids, and then the couple up here and people want to see what's going on. Uh, and they're trying to use the area to maximize their floral displays. So they put them toward the back so they can have their time to shine too. So some site assessment logistics, you're going to have a toolbox Basically, because like we talked about with that arch, there's going to be some assembly that's necessary. Um, you have to think about the number of deliveries. If I have so many arrangements and I have to make four stops at that site, if I have other weddings coming out of my shop the same day, I have to coordinate all of that. And I might have to tell somebody, no, like, hey, I can't do your wedding that day because I'm already booked up because of the number of deliveries I have to do for that wedding. Um, you need to be organized. You need to plan and coordinate. You need to coordinate so that you have people going to the right place with the right floral arrangements. Um, and you're going to want to bring tools just for assembly stuff. And you know what? Things happen. You might have to, you know, piece things back together too. Um, so successful visual experience. This is that whole thematic development. So you can see by looking at these pictures, it's the red and white theme. looks like they tried to make a heart even with the napkin. Um, so they're trying to use principles and elements of design. They're using those colors to pull it together and make it look cohesive. Um, that's that common design thread as well. And they've really paid attention to the details. The only thing that really bugs me here is they have, well, it's not really that big a deal. They have white calla lilies. They have red roses. They've followed that here. They've added baby's breath. Here they have um, hypercum berries and a red calla lily. So they're using the same flowers throughout. The filler has changed. Um, and we don't know, too, that this could be a picture somebody pulled together to kind of give the idea of a theme. It may not be some pictures from the same event. Uh, so color story, that's the common denominator. It's what we typically tend to see. Um, it sometimes will play up to the season of the event. Could be favorite colors. You can see here they have what we assume is the bride and groom wearing blue shoes. Um, and sometimes it's just an accent. So this one's giving you all the images of blue, 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 blue. Uh, and they've also put in some, looks like burgundy in there too. So your audience, um, who is the event honoring? And if it's something that is, you know, we're honoring a certain individual, what do they like? What do they prefer? Um, we need some background. If it's an organization, um, if you were going to honor something like, an, you know, FFA chapter, the colors are blue and gold. You would want to play into the agricultural theme, maybe put some wheat in the arrangement, something that really ties it all together. And it also gives your client the impression that you know what you're doing and you've done your research and asked really good questions. Um, you may want to include favorite flowers and think about the era. If it's an event, um, I have seen some events before where they did like a blast from the past and they tried to play into the arrangements from that era too. So like the era when my parents got married, they used to take um, these big carnations and put a little sweetheart rose in the middle of it. 
And that was a really common thing in the late seventies. So they may do something like that for their anniversary. Um, some other things you can think about. So they have season listed, play into the season if you can, um, especially if it's an event that is, you know, Hey, I need arrangements, do what you want. I would play into the season a little bit. Um, surrounding environment, you need to consider that too, if it's going to be outdoors or indoors. And then the foundation for decisions. Are we making this decision based on price? Is it going to be the color that I need? Um, maybe it's a certain flower. You need to find out what their bottom line is if it's going to be a budget issue. Spatial scale. So they have scale, size, and proportion listed here. So if I'm sitting around this table, something to consider is if this arrangement is too tall or too short, um, that's better than right at head height. Cause if you have it at head height, it's hard for people to talk around the table. Now this one, you can see that's like a buffet setup. It doesn't matter how tall it is because people are just grabbing food and going to go back to their spots and eat. An event timeline. Um, some events, depending on where you're working, you may be working with an event planner. Um, just be sure to communicate and find out when deadlines are and what they need, where, when all of that good stuff. Um, there may be some other vendors you have to deal with too. They have caterer, DJ, those kind of things. Other music you may have to consider would be something like a band. If there's a live band or, you know, chamber orchestra playing, you're going to want to make sure you don't have a big arrangement on the stage. It takes up their space. And then they have installation checklist. Um, some people will actually come pick up their own bridal stuff. Some people may say, Hey, no, I need you to deliver it. I need you to set it up. Um, and floral shops are going to be sure to charge for those pieces too. Um, but just be aware too. And then time for removal. Some places need you to get stuff out because there's going to be an event the next day behind yours. Um, so just things to look at. Budget and pricing is going to be huge. Um, especially for the floral designer. Um, this is client budget. Find out what their budget is, prepare a price sheet, list service and props. You need to include any services. Maybe I'm dropping things off. Um, make sure that you're including labor. Include floral supplies, rental items, and then you have to include all expenses. So if I had to hire extra help to help with an event, I would want to make sure to include that in my price, which would be that labor piece. Um, and you need to make sure that you're covering the expenses to include your overhead costs for the floral shop, you know, for the electricity, um, water, um, you know, a lot of different things. It could be rent of the building that all has to come out of, you know, the, the pieces that you put out and deliver. So removal, um, you need to make sure that you find out the end of the time frame for the event. You may have to help with cleanup. A lot of times if it's a wedding in this area, it's, you know, the couple find someone to do that for them. Um, just be sure that that's communicated clearly. All right, that is it for your chapter 11 site assessment and theme development.